Hello, everyone. If you've done any custom connections yourselves, by now you've realized that you've had to erase and start over many times, undo a very large number of commands to get back to where you want, and repeat one many, many times to get it right. Today, I'd like to share with you a few tips and tricks that I use when creating custom connections to cut down on the repetition. I'll show a technique to get my view ready, how to restart when I need to, how to handle a custom connection that doesn't work the way I want it to, and once they do work for me, how to share them with others and make changes from one project to the next. We're going to look at two custom connections today. The idea is to reduce the repetitive work that's required so that they can be applied more quickly throughout a structure. The connection on the left is a total of three connections between a column and a top plate that is supporting two mitered beams. There's a weld connecting the plate to the column and two bolts connecting the plate to each beam. The one on the right is ha also has a plate on top of a column with a weld and bolts uh, to a main beam, plus two clip angles tying to an intersecting beam. Also, each column has a cut applied to it to shorten it and make room for the plate. When there are a high number of areas like these, it can get very time consuming to add each item individually, even when using the advanced copy tools that are available. We'll do a custom connection of each one of these so that we can apply them all in one command wherever they might be needed. Let's get into advanced steel. The first thing I'll do is set up a group to isolate an area of the model to make it easier for me to see and select objects. I'll create the group first and then add elements to it. You can also turn off layers and hide objects temporarily if you want. Once I get the group done here, then I will activate it. All right. Next, I'll set up the first connection. Right before I create a custom connection, I like to use the undo mark command in case I need to come back and recreate it. Now I'm ready to start. In the advanced tool palette, custom connections, create connection template. This one has three beams. For the inputs, I'll select the column first, the left beam, and then the right beam. Next, I'll fill in the name. and then select the objects to be included. Make sure you use a regular window left to right when you do this and only select the connection objects and not the beams. Back in the dialog, fill in the prompts. Okay, we're ready to insert it.
back to the palette, insert connection template, and follow the prompts. Notice that the plate and bolts are out of position. The connection template recorded the original orientation of the beams. So this time the beams are facing a different direction, therefore some of the parts are out of place. We'll need to go back and recreate the connection. I'll use the undo back command to return to the mark. Then I'll use undo mark again to get ready for the next try. Now I'm ready to recreate. The only setting that's different this time is the driver situation. I'm using the first one because it is a closer match to the beam arrangement and will be more flexible. The prompts can be the same as before. We'll insert it again. This time, everything is where it's supposed to be because I chose the correct driver situation this time. We can consider this connection finished. And let's go over a few tips. Before starting, set up a group to include only what you need for the custom connection and then activate it. When other elements are cluttering your view, it makes it harder to see and select what you need. A group can help you focus on only what matters at the moment. Now this step isn't required, but it might make it easier, so it's up to you. Next tip, right before starting a custom connection, use the undo command with the mark option. If you need to go back and create the same connection again, type undo again with the back option, which will return to the mark. This allows you to avoid individual undos, which will take longer to go back and is a fast way to undo multiple operations at once, plus return to a specific point in the drawing. A word of caution here. If you only use the U command on the keyboard, you'll be undoing one at a time. The advanced steel macros add so many additional commands to the history, it takes forever to go back. For this reason, I don't recommend using U to undo. The next tip, the driver situations. You'll want to choose the closest match to your beam arrangement. If you're not sure, try the first one first. If it doesn't work when you insert it, try the second one and then the third. Sometimes this won't matter, but sometimes it does depending on the connection you're trying to create, uh, just like the first connection. This is when using undo mark and undo back come in handy so you can return quickly and try again. Moving on to the next one. This one is similar to the first one, but has an intersecting beam and clip angles. Again, I'm using undo mark in case I need to try again.
This time, after the name, after I enter the name, I'm going to copy it to the clipboard in case I need that later. Remember to use a regular window to select the connecting objects. and insert this one. We won't need to redo this one because it inserted correctly on the first try. We can consider this one finished now. Another tip for you, when you're entering the name and the prompts, think about copying the name even when, uh, and, and even the prompts to the clipboard or a text editor before finishing the connection. You could find yourself creating the same connection multiple times while you're testing and you don't want to have to keep retyping the same things over and over and over. After you've set up some custom connections that could be used on other projects, you'll want to make them available to other users. I'll show you a way to accomplish this. I'm going to select one of each of the custom connections I created in today's model. Be sure to include all objects involved, including the beams. Next. I'll use Control Shift C to copy with a base point. Then start a new drawing using the advanced steel template and paste into it with Control V. Save the new drawing into a shared folder. After that, go into management tools. Default, activate the filter, and type in custom. Go into the general branch, and there will be a setting for the path to custom connection templates. Enter the path to the folder that you're going to use. The last step here is very important you must click load into load settings into advanced before closing defaults and back in the active model click update defaults that will load the changes you just made from the database next time you insert a connection template the shared drawing will be available containing the new connections Here's my tip for sharing. First, you'll want to create a folder to store drawings for all your custom connections. Put this folder on the network if you can. You can have as many drawings as you need. After you create a connection, just copy and paste it into one of these drawings. 
In Management Tools, go to Defaults, use Filter and type in Custom. Then go to the General Branch and enter the path to your folder. When you're finished making changes in Defaults, make sure you click Load Settings in Advance. And back in your active model, update defaults. And have all your users set this path in their management tools and your connections will be shared. Okay, so I've created a couple of connections. I've got them ready for sharing. Now I'll show you a way to make changes to a custom connection and perform an update. And I'll give you a hint before I do this. I won't be using the update now button that you may have run across uh, that's in the connection properties because it simply won't work. First, I'll add new connections from my custom template drawing. Next, I'll make a change to one of the clip angles. But notice that all the properties are grayed out. To make a change to a custom connection, you must allow object modification first. Then you can make any changes you need. Now I'll go back into the joint properties and change the number of bolts. Next, I'll go to the Extended Modeling tab and choose Transfer Properties. Select the other three connections. I'm selecting the entire thing just to make it easier and press Enter when I'm done. Then I'll select part of the connection template where I made the change. I'll just select the angle and there's the update. That change will get propagated to the other connections. Here's my tip for making changes. First, make sure you allow object modification on one of your custom connections. Then make any changes you need. Next, use the transfer properties command to update the other ones. That command is located on the extended modeling tab in the ribbon on the joint utilities panel. I use this method because the update now button doesn't do anything. With the transfer properties command, uh, you can insert a custom connection or a shared connection template from one of your drawings and still adapt it to the current project. So here are our resources that you can take advantage of for self-help. On our YouTube page, you'll find the recordings for all our previous webcasts. This one will be available shortly. Plus, we have plenty of articles on our blog at hagerman.com and even more content on our customer hub. If you'd like more assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us for support. I hope you find today's information useful. Thanks for watching.